So I've been messing around with um, some polychromos this morning to get a palette together. So I've done some of this because it's quite time consuming. I don't know if I'm going to have time to finish the whole thing with you guys, but you'll get the idea from watching me do part of it. So hopefully that will work out okay. Hi, Christia. But yeah, Rashna, send me a message afterwards or I'm not going to remember. <laughs> Right, so Polychromos today, let me show you the palette that we've got. So we've got Burnt Umber. I'm just going to keep this here for a second or two. I know I'll whip them away a bit too quick normally. We have Van Dyke Brown as well. Some Earth Green Yellowish. Hiya Annie. Some Bista as well. Some Burnt Sienna. Some Chromium Green Opaque. We're getting there now, two more and then we're done. So Dark Sepia. and olive green yellowish. So we'll show them as I use them, so no stress. So I'm just gonna put those ones away. And the first one that I'm gonna start with is this burnt umber color. Just noticed how many bits are all over this. So what I'm doing with this one is laying down the outlines of the shape. So you can see from the rest of this stump that most of this doesn't have any real guidelines on it. So all of these um, wavy lines and details are ones that I've added in. So I'm gonna use this first of all to sketch out the shape that I'm trying to create. So I'll just do a couple of outlines first. Hi Bev. Let's go in thinner with this one. We'll have a bigger space on this side. So we'll just start with these two for the time being. So once you've laid your initial outline down, I'm just going to put a base layer of these colours down with a bit of shading. And at this point, I'm just going to press a bit harder against the outside edge of this one that I've finished so that I don't actually lose the, the edge for the rest of the shading. So these lay down a lot differently to the Prismacolor that you normally see me using. This is more the layers and building the colours up nice and slowly. So this is way more time consuming than the Prisma, but it makes a nice change. And make sure I don't colour over that branch. So I'm going to feather off the pressure at the edge of this area so that it's easier to blend the other colours in. And I think I'm going to introduce a bit of green into there so I'm just going to carry on with the edge of this shape for the time being. probably a far simpler way of getting a wood effect but I've quite enjoyed doing this this morning. And then I'm going to move over to this one as well. And I'm just going to darken the edge here so that I don't lose the shape and then start adding more of a base layer down at the top. It takes a little while to readjust my brain to using these because they're so different to the Prisma ones with them being oil based. A lot, lot harder to colour with. I can certainly feel it in my um, tennis elbow using these. 
yeah we're the same Christy we've got a mixed bag of weather here today it's um either bright bright sunshine or it then it goes dark and it buckets down so while I've been doing the trial run of this this morning my lamp has been on off on off welcome to great British summertime crazy sat out in the garden yesterday Probably only your second day, Bev, and oh, I'll let you off then. <laughs> yeah, crazy weather here, so if it suddenly goes dark, I'm not in the middle of a world disaster at this end, it's just um, just this weather. Yeah, I know, Annie, it's mad. I've got the fleece over the back of my chair, still got the blankets down, crazy. I'm just going to add a bit more of a, I'm going a little bit slower down this bottom end because I'm going to be adding a bit of the green in. Hiya Hannah. So I think what I'm going to have here is a bit of a, a shape in the wood. So I'm just going to shade that in as well. Hot and humid in DC as well. Yeah, Christy, you're not too far away. We're in Northamptonshire. The weather's just balmy. There we go. So the green, uh, chromium green opaque. So I'm going to add a little bit of this in from the bottom. This chromium green opaque colour. So this is where I just have to try and pick out the blades of grass because I have a habit of colouring through them. So we've got a gap in the bottom here. So I'm just going to add a light layer of that in. And then we've got a gap in here as well. So I'm only pressing really gently with this because I've got a couple of other greens that are going to go over the top in places. As well as the browns. Oh, you went to Milton Keynes, Christia. We were only in MK a few days ago. There we go. Right, so I'm just trying to find my Van Dyke Brown. Where have you gone? There it is. So the next one I'm going to use is this Van Dyke Brown colour. Just keep that there for a second. So with this one, it's just a case of graduating over the first layer that's been put down so I'm going to gently put this over the top of the burnt umber that I was using extend the colour down a little further so I'm going to leave a little white area there to add in some of the other colours so I'm going to work from top to bottom on this one some sort of over blending the first colour and then this just lightens it up. So let's hook this around this leaf. I'm going to leave another little light area behind here. And let's work it around these leaves as well. So I'm going to leave myself a little bit of a space there. And re go over these lines where I want one of these other sort of knots in the wood to be. Close up a little bit of that white space. It's always difficult trying to get the pencil stroke right when you're going around bits like this. So I've got little bits of this colour on these leaves and things, but it doesn't matter. So let's close that gap up a little as well. And then in here, again, I'm just going to over blend slightly the darker colour. blend this over very slightly and again leave myself with some white space for the other colours I'm going to be putting down. So I'm just going to use this to re-identify the edge of the line so that 
I can still see what I'm doing with this shading. And then I'll start to introduce this from the bottom now. I'm going to add a little bit of this over the top of some of this initial green layer. Don't know what's got into this lamp. Sorry about this flickering. I think it must be the weather. Mad. Mad, mad weather. There we go. And then to add a little bit of warmth into it now, this burnt sienna is a really, really nice colour to go with any brown shade that you want to use. So this just warms things up slightly. So again, I'm going to pull some of this over both of the browns I've just put down. Close up that white gap there. Haven't quite finished this area off yet. I've left some of this, so I'm going to run it into here as well. And let's get a little underneath here as well. So I'm going to put the lightest brown under there so I'm just going to add a little pop of this around the leaves what was the reason switching to the polys I just fancied a change um, a lot of people say to me I wish you'd use your polychromos a little bit more and I'm always doing wood effects in uh, in Prisma and I figured let's get the polys out and give these a whirl and actually, I did enjoy doing the wood effects in these on the page in um, Enchanted Forest, which was really good. Oh, thanks, Bev. Yeah, I'm going to be doing some more work on that this coming week. The little house page. But don't give me credit for what you've seen me do so far, apart from the stonework around the actual door frame, because that was literally me putting the same colours and technique into practice that I learnt from that Chris Cheng that I've just done. So it's not an original idea, you guys. I'm literally just practicing what I've learned. You all know I love doing stonework anyway. It's one of my favorite things to color. So it was no contest really for the next page. Right, I'm thinking I want that to be quite light behind those leaves. So I might run a little bit of this red underneath it and around. I'm just going to warm up in between these blades of grass as well. <laughs> That's sweet of you, Bev, but it's not my technique. But I do appreciate the feedback. But it's, it was quite funny, actually, over on Instagram when I was um, running that live with people on Friday because I was kind of explaining what I was doing. I actually have no clue whether um, the logic behind why I was doing what I was doing was the reason that Chris does it in her videos. I'm kind of just guessing really from where you would kind of put shadows and things. It can be really difficult, can't it, when you're trying to learn from somebody but you have no commentary, it's so difficult. So I can actually completely understand why you guys prefer it when I speak rather than put music on the videos. Hi, Nikki. So this lighter brown, I'm just gonna run this over then into these little light areas that I've left so I'm not going to take it over all of the browns because I want to keep the different colours that I've added in but I'm just using this to sort of blend over any of the areas that haven't quite been finished off like these couple and then I'm going to start adding in the detail over the top so let's go for um no not that one that one Let's go for the greens first. So this olive green yellowish. Hi Quinella. No, there's not many tutorials that use polychromos. I wish there was or I'd be watching them as well. <laughs> so this is just a slightly darker shade of green. So I'm going to add this in. <clears throat> just going to have a sip of my drink. I feel like I'm about 10 octaves below where I normally am. Oh, too much talking. <clears throat> right, so with these greens, I find with the polys that you have to kind of like put a base layer down first and then add your details over the top. So my base layer for this one was that chromium green opaque. This is a couple shades darker. So I'm just using this 
really for shadowing purposes behind these blades of grass. You wouldn't put black or anything right down here because you would just lose the colours. And I'm going to just run, gently run this up over some of the brown as well. So it's not going to go muddy, it's going to sit just above the colour really nicely. That's one of the beauties of oil-based products. So let me just run this. Sorry if I'm just missing the comments just now. I've literally got my head underneath my phone again. Just one second and I will have a little look. As I can see it moving, I just can't read them. So let's get this in between. So I'm going to add more green on once I've done some of these other shadowy layers. So let me have a look. So this one is one of the darker shades that I'm using on here. I'm just going to sharpen this a wee bit. I need a slightly better point. Right, so the idea with this one is this is all looking pretty flat at the moment. When you start adding in sepia and black, this is how it looks. So I'm just going to move this over slightly and make sure that this is in shot. So initially I'm just going to break up the top outline at the top of this stump here. And I'm also going to use this sepia to actually re-outline the shapes that I drew with the first brown. Morning, Palmy. So you don't need a lot of pressure when you're layering to do sort of details like this. This is one of the things that the polys are pretty good for, <clears throat> excuse me, in adding these shadows and things and extra fine details over the top. So I'm just going to make a nice big area of sort of darkened wood here, which I will add some black into as well once we get to it. Johanna's already given us these little lines at the top as well, so you can highlight those with the with the pencil. And then let's carry on down. So this was the next line that I drew before I started colouring, so I'm just going to put that one in. And let's just plot out this one as well, which you can only just see the ghost of because of the other layers that I've put over the top. So I'm just going to refine the edge of that shape again. Actually, I'm going to put my glasses on for this. Oh, there we go. I can see what I'm doing now. Right, so with this one, I'm going to add more sort of darker areas in. And this is where you can press really lightly and get some really sort of fine lines and things added in. So back here behind this leaf, I'm going to make this just a little bit darker. I'm going to just find the other side of it as well. Right down to this branch. And then where we've got the ghost of a sort of natural shape forming here anyway. What I might do is just use this to add some extra little lines, which is the details that you would see on wood anyway. And then down here as well, so where we're getting near this green, again, I'm just going to use the very sharpish, sharpish, that's not a word, is it? Sharpest, can't speak, edge of the pencil to get the um, finer details in and down here as well. Um, the I did a rather large tree stump in Enchanted Forest and really enjoyed doing it with the polys, so... That's pretty much the reason that I've dug these out this morning. Morning, Alexandra. Had to cut Hubby's hair. Crikey, I hope he didn't rush it to get here. Bless him, I've got visions of him with a number two all over. Maybe that's what he likes, but you know what I mean. <laughs> so let's find the edge of this. So I'm not going to outline all of this until I've got the next bit of the shape in, but what I can do is do some of these inside bits. And just add sort of a few more of these little shadowy areas. It went well, good. <laughs> so, and then what I'm going to do is run. Where's my chromium green gone? There it is. Smallest number of pencils, and I can't find what I'm wanting. This chromium green opaque. So, this was the first um, green that I laid down at, towards the bottom. 
of this um, stump area here and what I'm going to do now is just run gently run some of this over the top of some of these lighter areas particularly around these upper leaves where there would possibly be some sort of green around these if this was in real life so some of these lighter areas I'm just going to treat it to a little dusting of this green colour particularly and I can just see the areas I'd left before I um, started to get the table ready and, uh, and packed everything up to come and sit over here I've been binge watching The Crown again this morning whilst doing this which has been super good fun there we go I'm just going to take the glasses off so I can actually get a better look at that you can just see an area that I've missed in here from earlier on and in here as well so let me finish this shadowing up so I'm going back in with the dark sepia so I can see where I've started to do an area of shadow in here and I haven't quite finished it must have got distracted with a good bit on the telly and down in here as well so these are really nice, they layer up pretty well without going sort of all muddy and things. Um, they seem to work really, really well, even with just sort of adding the greens and things over the top. In some pencil ranges, they, the thing would go, you know, really quite muddy looking, but it's looking pretty good. Okay, so I'm just going to add, that's looking better. Must have completely missed that earlier on. And now what I'm going to do is add some of the detail underneath the bowl. So I'm going to move this back. Yes, Alexandra, we're in polychromos. So burnt umber again. I'm just going to move this down and then do some work underneath this bowl. So I'm going to follow these natural lines around. Johanna's given to us. I'm just going to get that on the angle. Just start adding in. So this is the first brown that I used on the stump a few minutes ago. So I'm just going to plot these lines out and then that will be where I'll add the extra details. You could do with a bit of tip on you, you're a little bit blunt. There we go, that's better. Getting bits absolutely everywhere. Right, that's better. These do keep their point really, really well, but when you're doing something like this, you really do need them to be nice and sharp. And so I think what I'm going to do is underneath the bowl here. We'll start adding in a reasonable layer of shadow under here. So this will be darkened in with that sepia colour anyway. So I'm just going to keep this on the side. Sorry this is a bit on the skew, it's just um, easier with the camera shot to do it this way and as well for shading. Otherwise I'm going to be practically sitting on my head which is not going to be good. So let's run this all the way up underneath the bowl. I'm no, I'm not on my holiday yet, Alexandra. Not for a few more days. So there will be um, a Sunday coming up in the next two or three weeks where you're not going to have me live streaming. I'm not taking my uh, camera arm and everything with me on holiday. I'm going to be taking sort of books and uh, pencils and things, but. I'm not going to take all my live streaming equipment with me this time, but I'll still be around on social media anyway. Right, I'm just going to re-darken in some of the edge of this one. These things is kind of better to shade as you go, really. So I'm going to make that line super dark and then so you can see me move into small circles now rather than 
the sort of straight linear blending and shading that you could see me doing earlier. I'm only doing this because I've got such a tight space to play in and I do want there to be a bit of differentiation between the colours. Just having a look at what Catherine was doing, I could hear banging and it didn't sound good. How's things with the ship? Oh, she was cutting the masts off. Normally when I hear a cutting noise like that, if I hear an expletive after it, something's pinged on the floor. But thankfully not this time. Has such a tiny space to play with in here so I'm just going to add a small amount of this darker colour in and then I'll get blending again. But yeah I've, I've cleared a few of my work in progress pictures up somebody was asking me the other day do you have many work in progresses and I was saying I've got four and it's making my brain ache. So I cleared two of them because I finished them and then instantly started two more. So I've now got this one, the house one. I've got a portrait one, which is a non-JB book and I've still got half a Rita Berman one to finish as well. So my, my brain is now aching again. White chocolate mocha. <laughs> So I'm going to add a little bit more of this one because I've got a slightly bigger space to play with. And again, I'm just going to join these up. There we go. Just a little more of this one in. And then I think I'm going to actually run along a slightly darker colour into there. So I'm just going to do this line. I'm not going to do the very outside edge one. Just move this down a bit so you can see what I'm doing. There we go. But yeah, I've got four on the go at the moment again, which is frying my tiny brain. It's a good job I write things down because if I didn't, Every time I came to restart something again, I'd be like, what the hell was I doing there? It's like this, I'll have to finish this stump um, over the next day or so if I don't manage to finish it on live with you guys. Because if I don't, I'm going to have to re-watch my own video to remember what the hell I've done. It's terrible, isn't it? Terrible. So I'm actually going to put a little bit of this, because this is quite a big bit here. And then let's just shade in. From this outside edge as well. Oh Alex why haven't you posted it? You should post it I'm sure it looks fantastic. You'll have as all of us that are watching on here are going to want to see it now. There we go. Right let's go to where has my Van Dyke brown gone? No that's Beaster. officially hiding from me. There it is. Right, so this Van Dyke Brown again. So this is the next one. Yeah, at least it's always available. That's the sad thing. Somebody asked me over on Instagram um, on Friday night, are you going to finish off that one you were doing with the watercolours? And I was like, oh God, yeah, I will do. Um, but I think I've left it at a place where I wasn't halfway through a bit, which is a bonus, but oh. That's why I keep an art journal. If I didn't, it's like this colour palette for this stump. The next time I do a tree stump, I won't remember the colours that I've used. I'll have to look back at my either my notes or this video to remember what I've done. Crazy. So I'm going to sort of block shade in under here because this is the darkest area. So I'm going to add more details in over the top of this, probably with the sepia.
Yeah, I've managed to get a lot of colouring done this weekend, it's been really nice. I've had the French Open tennis on, which we've been watching. And then, yeah, and the crown as well, which has been great. Just make sure this is in shot. So I'm just going to close up some of these gaps. But again, I'm going to leave little areas of white space where I can run the um, the burnt sienna and the, the bista through. Just to break up the colour a little bit. And luckily you can see the ghost of these lines as well, which is where I'll be adding the details through. But yeah, I think there was somebody that had been working on this picture and had um, already done her tree stump. That looked, looked absolutely fantastic. And quite a few people have tagged me into to this, which has been really, really lovely to see as well. It's quite bizarre, though, being tagged into um, images where people are actually following along and I can see my hand colouring in their picture. It's so funny. Right, let's just join a few of these bits up because this is sort of nearer to the bowl so we would have more of a shadow from the ship towards the middle here. So I'm just gonna <clears throat> right, so let's run some of that nice burnt sienna through so this is that nice warm brown. So I'll start from this side edge again. I'm going to use this as a like a blend over layer. And this just adds a nice bit of warmth under here. I'm just going to add a little bit of it onto this bit because I actually want some lighter brown in here. The same with this one just enough to tie them together. So the same under this bit here. And then what I'll probably do is add some bits of green, I think, as well. But yeah, these are very, very different. You have to really, really layer up with these pencils. I would probably have got the bulk of this done if I'd been using the, the Prismacolor because they're just um, so much easier to to mess about with than this but change is as good as the next thing. Hi Cindy. So my lightest colour, this Bista, I'm going to use this over the remaining light areas. And just pull these together. And then we'll add the details in over the top. In fact, I think I might put a bit of the green in there, so I might just add a little touch of that. I might put a bit of green in there as well, actually. So this chromium green opaque. This is the base that I've been using for the green at the bottom of the stump. So I'm going to add some of this in to these light areas under here. So I'm just going to introduce it initially into the bit of the page that I've left white and then work a little bit of it back into the brown. And I think here where we've got some lighter areas as well, I'm just going to run a little bit of this green over the top. We've got a couple of little areas I can run it into under here as well. And then we'll get the sepia going. Our summer school holidays um, don't start until July here, um, Alexandra, but that's good that you'll have lots of time for colouring. 
So this dark sepia colour again. So we'll start adding in some of the darker areas. So I'm just going to re-darken the lines that were already here. Yeah, they certainly do keep their points so much better, Annie. Yeah, they do. So I'm going to re-darken in some of these, the original line that was drawn on here. And just underneath this bowl as well. And I'm just going to vary the pencil stroke just so that it's not a continuous straight line. Because on the top of a stump, if it had been chopped and things, you would have sort of uneven markings and things under here. So if you just crisscross with the nib of the pencil, you just get a slightly different look. So let's just find this line while we're in this area as well. Rather than dot from one section to the other. So. going to actually shade into this area that I've left white. As well. And I'm going to darken the edge of this a little more. And again, just interrupt the line. So a little bit up and down, a little bit side to side. And then you can add any other little sort of marks that you want to at this stage as well. Just brush some of these little bits away. It's going to just darken in the shadow underneath the bowl. Deepen these lines, going all the way along, and carry on with this little bit of shading along here. I think what I'm going to use is the, the black pencil for the very edge. So this is a good spot to maybe add a bit of detail because we've got a slightly wider bit up here. And just darken the edge off and then run this down into some of the lines that I've already made so, for, so what I'll probably do is just take this along to this area which I've finished and then do some more of the actual stump itself so I'm just Alternating between the sepia and the black now. Let's just run it up to there. And then again, I'm just going to vary the pencil stroke along here, which just makes it look a little bit less flat. So I do this a lot when I'm doing woodwork. It just makes it look a little bit more realistic so we're kind of just doing little crisscross motions with the pencil in fact I might add a little bit more there we go so back on with the sepia again I think like I said I'm just going to take this bit up to here because I haven't finished messing around with the shading yet so let's just take this over and again integrate it into the marks, these black marks that I've already made. And just vary the stroke a little bit and then still with the black. Just alter the marks on the top of this as well. Right, let's go. 
carry on with a bit of the downwards bit now. So this is just um, a cheap craft paintbrush. Um, those of you that do paint in, this probably means more to you than it does to me. Um, this the ten zero to me just means tiny. Um, so this is the one that I use for my wave techniques. So I'm just going to give my gouache a little bit of a shake. I'm not going to bother squeezing this into anything. I'm just going to take it straight out of the tube. So it's Windsor and Newton white gouache. And then I think what we'll do is I'm going to stick a piece of kitchen towel over this just while that pen's drying. And then let's see how we get on. Looking forward to this bit. <laughs> no, it's the best bit. I might need to go and grab a quick cup of water actually out of the kitchen, but let's see how we get on. So I'm going to work from top to bottom on this one. So the first thing I'm going to do is actually just get rid of these black lines. So this is just using the gouache neat, I'm not diluting this at all. And this very, very thin brush lets you get a really fine line. I'm going to leave little bits of the black line showing because it just breaks the contrast up a little bit. Definitely going to need some water, I think, because this brush is going to gloop up quite quick otherwise. Damn it. Catherine will be like, have you finished? You can get a really beautiful line with these brushes. If you're in the UK, um, this is a set that I got from the works. And I think they were like, I don't know, two quid, I guess, for a bunch of different sizes. Let's lose this line as well. Definitely going to need water. Damn. So let's break this line up as well. So I'm not going to do the outside edge of the bowl. I kind of like the fact that there is a, um, a you know, black outline to this. Each to their own. Um, I just kind of like it. So I'm going to just run real quick to the kitchen and grab a little cup of water because this is going to gloop up otherwise. So just two seconds you guys. So I've got the extractor fan on, she's not going to hear me if I call her one second. So let's go back. So I'm literally just taking the paint out of the tube. No point um, putting it into like a little, a little thing because I just end up wasting it. So now that this first little layer will be more or less dry, I'm just going to use the edge of this just to add some different lines in. Chocolate! <laughs> you need to explain to me sometime why you like hearing me say that. Don't totally don't get it. <laughs> it does make me laugh. I love it. So let's get some more waves breaking over the front of this. I'm just going to add a little more onto that one because I've just not quite gone over to the extent I wanted it to. I don't want to handle with shakes when I do this. Very frustrating. I'm just going to cover some of that inside line as well. Oh, bless him for blackbirds bats singing his socks off in the garden. So 
very cute. Half a bagel and then ice cream. That sounds like my kind of breakfast. <laughs> Let's sort this little line out under here as well. So that's where he's glooped up a little bit again. So I'm just going to give the brush a little clean. That's my accent. <laughs> God, if you think my accent's um, fancy, you ought to put me next to somebody who speaks the proper Queen's English. Um, I can assure you my accent is definitely not on the fancy side. So funny. So let's just, and then under here, again, where he's travelling through the water, we'll get a little bit of a trail going. So I'm going to use the black lines that Johanna's given us as a bit of a base point. And then and add some little lines behind the fish as well. Try and get some nice little fine lines going under here. Honestly, I love this little brush, but it does get itself all glooped up ever so easy. So while I'm at it, I will do these bubbles for the fish with the brush. In fact, I've just spotted a black line that I haven't actually covered over. There we go. It's just going to unglue this guy again. Get a bit of this stuff. Don't do these ones down here. And I'm holding my breath while I do this. Yeah, maybe so, Nikki. You've clearly been watching my lives far too long. <laughs> I'm anticipating my next move before I even do it. Definitely. <laughs> you know what I'm like for bling. I've got to have bling. But yeah, I'm thinking probably. Um, I might not go over the white. I might add some little silver ones well that's the least round thing i've ever seen in my life there we go <laughs> so let's just get a few more of these lines going on the bottom of the hole no worries palmy take care ah yes it does Yes, it does. That's a thumping good idea. And they're just in the cupboard next to me as well. So let's just add some little lines from these guys swimming as well. I always hold my breath when I'm doing these lines. Sorry if I keep going quiet. I'm just going to recover that. I'm 
this um, with practice carol is, is super super easy um, it's just practice and having the right brush and this is easier than trying to do it with white pen as well so I might just tweak I'm just interrupting the solid line. How's Serena doing? Is she winning? No. Oh, damn it, she's not winning. No, she's lost the first set. Oh, God. So we're watching the um, French Opens on in the background and Serena Williams is playing, just looking at the score. What are they, 5-5 five, five in the second? Oh, come on, Serena. Right, there we go. So, that, as they say, is a wrap. <laughs>